I'm going to get going. If you have any questions, there's a chat in the corner. You can ask. You can also raise your hand. You could turn your mic on and say something too if I'm going too fast or going along. I'll try to have some breaks in here. It's going to be about an hour. This was all going to be recorded and I will post it and I'll give you access and I'll give you access to a link to the actual slideshow at a later date too as well. So you have all the information that's there. I'm Keith Kelly. I've been teaching for about 30 plus years. I started over at Oxford Hills as a language arts. I've been a social studies teacher. I've been a librarian. And then I switched to Nokomis Regional Middle School and I've been integrated technology. I teach fifth, sixth, seventh, and eight. And I'm going to, and I'm basically a STEAM, STEM teacher. And I'm going to go through kind of the process that I do and then kind of have that carry through for what information for you. Uh, Keith.Kelly at main.gov is an email access to it. And again, I'll have this in the slideshow and all the information. And my website, if you go to steammakers.education, that will have all the website and everything linked in there too. I mean, if you find things at the end of this where you're like, hey, I wish you'd talk more about this, I do, I'm going to kind of tell you what my future stuff is too, so you can have an idea. Basically, I got asked to be a teacher a leader fellow focusing on STEM. And there was others of us that are focusing on music and humanities. We have science, all those subjects too as well. My goal today is to provide some very useful information, kind of an overview, talking about STEM, and then get kind of core, like how we do some teamwork and stuff like that. And then kind of some very specific tools that you can use, and then kind of how it cross links between subjects. And then we'll come back and, and we'll keep building on it as I do my PDs. You don't have to come live. You can come when you want to what fits your schedule. Asynchronous works for me. And again, any information I'll provide to as well. So, and because I know I would my, like my wife, my wife wishes I could, she could mute me and pause me too. As I tell the kids, it's good for them to have that ability. So hopefully when you get the video, you'll have it because you're going to go through and you're going to hear something I say and then go, oh, wait, well, this will be available. My slideshow will be available and you can jump to sections and we can make more specific. And my plan is this is this right now is us getting our feet underneath us, trying to get the web, get the whole interface all ready to go. So next year we'll pro be providing a PD once a month. I'll be doing one more in May, uh, May, June, and then we'll come back and there'll be one once a month. There'll be a newsletter like once, uh, basically once a week, basically for mine, it'll be a newsletter, a talk about a, a letter, a newsletter talking about specifically what I'm doing my PD, the PD, and then a post newsletter more interaction. That's our hope. And if you know of anybody that didn't, didn't come, that would find this interesting, please feel free to share it. And I'll keep reaching out too. You might've seen me. I've done presentations at Actum. I've done presentations at all over the country for things, doing presentations. I try to kind of do as many as I can. I'm right now building guitars with teachers in Wyndham. So I do some stuff around that too, as well. So I'm trying to uh, send it out, hoping to every middle school will have a program like mine. So I'm going to, uh, my focus, I'm going to call myself the steam powered makers. We're kind of steam makers is what we're trying to talk about. We're talking about steam and STEM in the classroom. And then that kind of that maker, that build aspect of it. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about collaboration. And basically I'm doing my level one, fifth grade, the higher overall, the overarching what I kind of do in fifth grade. And when I say fifth grade, this there, it's not really grade based. It's more of the, this is the age or the level that this thing occurs. Fourth, fifth, sixth, it, within that middle school range. And you'll find this, some of these techniques will work in the high school classroom It's or the you know college classroom. It's not specific, but I'm going to give an overarching idea, kind of talk about trying to define STEM. And then I'll give, I'll try to give some really useful tools to you that way. Now, my plan is every time you have PD me, you're going to leave with a very useful tool from me. That's my hope. So the problem that's had kind of happened, what is STEM? It was STEM, S-T-E-M, and then now we have it STEAM. We've added art to it. And what we found is that uh, STEM ha it has an overarching you know, science, technology, engineering, art, math, it has that overarching concepts. But when you really start talking, it's starting to be everything to anybody. And we keep kind of, I have people say, oh, let's add this, let's add. So let's kind of, we're going to kind of break it down a little bit. We all remember this uh, meme there it was for a while it was out there and, oh, what I, what people think I'm doing and what I really am doing. So when you're teaching uh, STEAM, we all know that the administration are like, oh yeah, our test scores will go up if you're doing that science and that math and that extra stuff that's all happening. The, what the other teachers think, the other teachers think that I just aren't playing with kids all the time. I am, and I do play with Legos and cars and 3D printers and cool stuff, but we're actually all the time, I'm, I always make a point, I'm not a separate program, I'm just 
a part of the program. I'm doing reading, writing, math, science, socially, everything. Parents have a tendency to think my program is a lot about, oh, look at all the tools and the cutting tools and things like that, that can kind of be scary. My students, I do think, I see it, that they really like, they think that, oh, they're making something, it's interactive. It's, they're not making it for this, the teacher, they're making it for the class, you know, for themselves or doing that stuff. I think it's a little bit of magic and I hope it is, but what it really is, is basically students, they're enjoying what they're, they're art filmmaking and they're making things, but it's simply just you're teaching everyone authentic making because that's what you're doing now so here's what we're going to try to learn in this as we do these developments we're going to try to define steam that's not easy we're going to try to define it it'll make, take a little time it's going to be over multiple ones but i'm going to try to give you a, a metaphor an idea what steam is i'm going to try how you show it in sub it links with other subjects and cross links with your math your sciences your language arts i'm going to give you a practical tool that when we're done it's a practical tool and we're going to application in the classroom. It's not an abstract concept. It's how we put it in our classroom. That's my plan for this. So if we define STEM, I like, I'm going to give you, try to keep doing this, give you metaphors and things or, or, or symbols so you can see what it stands for. So I kind of like to think of it as a bridge. Okay. You have science and you have your math and that's your, your core, your core items. And I look at that as your foundations. That's where the science is, you know, what, what the concrete, how you mix the concrete, what's the tension strength, what's the, you know, the mixtures you do, what's the fluidity of it. And the math is that, that measurements that happen to it, the measurements of the structure and all of that. So that's your kind of your foundations that you use. You, those are your building blocks you do to get to the other areas. And then engineering to me is it's the design of the structure so we're using those science and math skills and we're taking that together to create something and in this case i i'm using the bridge as an image and we go in and we figure out well what what do we need for materials what can be the structure what can't how far you know what are the dimensions we can do what's the stresses the strain that can that that bridge can handle and we're trying to go as far as we can with that using that engineering I like to look at art or technology and art as the what we use to create the structure. So we have that foundational elements in the science and math, and we have the engineering of the design, but that technology and art is what we use to actually create this structure. So your technology is what the things you use to build this with, whether it's digital, physical, whatever, it's how are you building that bridge? And your art is how are you uh, designing? What's that, the artful of, of the design, uh, all those concepts of spatial reasoning, things like that around art that actually helps you create something. I This is for me, this is how I kind of, that way I can kind of visualize and kind of think about how this is. That also lets me start to think about how they interact with each other. So it's not just a, I'm not doing one-offs. I'm kind of thinking, oh, okay, I'm using these science, using these math. This will also, if you're a math teacher, it will let you think, oh, how can I pull in the art, the technology, and engineering, the science into what I'm doing with the math or the art the same way, right? Some math might have an easier time pulling engineering some of the technology, maybe a little bit harder the art or the science depending. And the same thing, science might have a hard time with the art or art and technology engineering kind of can go together. So it kind of gives you that overview of kind of how to pull something in. And I would also say, you don't have to do it all. You just have to do one and kind of pull one thing in as you build and you'll find it builds in on itself. My overarching thing that is, we're gonna talk about is the collaboration kind of connects all these together. And we're gonna use this skill in the classroom, the collaboration, and then we're gonna see how it, oh, um, what I don't wanna do is give you a skill that only works in the science class, only works in the math class, only works in the art class. Or like, so what I'm trying to do is give you an overall skill that can work in all of them. And then I'm gonna give you a, a useful tool that can work in all of them. And then we'll talk about a little bit more specific about each subject. So the STEM STEAM curriculum that I use and that we're gonna kind of work our way through and that would be a, of use to you. Some of it might be more useful than others. I'm gonna kind of start in the level one area, the fifth grade, 
my fifth grade teamwork and roles and my citizenship communication. And then I'm going to kind of build all the way through the green and all the way through nine, 10, all the way undergrad. You know, I'm going to build these concepts as we go. So each one will give us a chance to focus. So that level one is teamwork, which I'm going to kind of talk about collaboration and teamwork today. So that's teamwork and roles. And that, it seems like a simple thing, but we want to have it defined in the classroom and we want the kids to have a ch chance because I talk to the kids about, you know, you don't always pick your best friends, not always the best group. Sometimes it is also kind of picking complementary skills, not the same skills. Don't tell my brother this, but him and I have complementary skills. I'm much more musical. He's much more mathematical. I'm much more, I always like to say he's software. I'm hardware. I'm much more physical. So when we work together, it's very complementary. Sometimes you want that. Sometimes you want the same skills to that. And we taught, and I'm going to teach the kids that. And level two, and this is kind of where my section second PD will be focused on is the uh, communication. And in this, it's like uh, asynchronous communicating, communicating not at the same time from using like what we're doing now, using virtual access to information. And it's applying that knowledge. And we're going to do some coding and I'll talk about the Legos and how I use that too. And again, it's it's the stuff is cool, but all everything I have, you can take that stuff out. I was actually watching an old video. We got interviewed a long time ago about the program. And it's funny, the stuff is the technology is really updated, but the concepts have carried through. And level two in, so sixth grade communication, seventh grade ends up being more production and how you have to take steps. You can't do step seven before you do step one. And also they kind of stack on each other. And, and if you don't take those steps, they, the quality won't be as good. I, it's all around what my program does. And level two in design in that in my eighth grade level ends up being it's design prototyping construction. So it's not just, oh, we're just building, trying to build in a group in fifth grade. Then we're trying to build in a group outside of our our thing in sixth grade and seventh is we're, we're doing our own thing using sharing tools yet sharing the information but eighth grade we're actually designing stuff coming up and having to oh it has to work the tolerance and i use 3d printers and stuff like that but again it could be anything it doesn't have to be just that so far okay so i'm going to stop for a second does anybody have any questions of what i've done so far and if you don't that's okay that's fine and you might think of it after the fact and that's fine i'm just trying to give a kind of an overview of stem what kind of focus and then kind of show you the four areas i'm going to start focusing on and then now i'm going to go into that first area of uh, teamwork and roles and then i'm going to show a very some useful tools and i'm going to go on i can stop at any time if you have any questions so I could say learning from success. So what this first section, the teamwork and roles, and I'm going to kind of talk you through what my fifth graders do. But what I mean by learning from success is they do an activity and they learn these basic things. And then what that does is we end up having challenges that those activities carry into. What I find is it's they're not learning that this concept just for me, my class it ends up adding another piece for them to learn. So they're learning it, and then there's a consequence or what not to have. So I'm gonna share this slideshow that you have. Also in the web page, which I'll show you, my curriculum's there, I've done the first section. Every time I do a section, I'll add to it so you can have that whole curriculum. You can have the links and everything, so you'll have it. So the, the key is you don't just, you're not just doing the assignment for the assignment for the teacher. You do the assignments, and the cool thing is they're learning simple machines or learning uh, science and math uh, concepts, but then there's a consequence, oh, if you paid attention, oh, if you didn't pay attention to when we were learning about friction and you don't you know, add friction to your car, it doesn't work as well in the, in, the, in the polling competition. Or if you don't pick the right gear ratio and you don't understand ratios, the, you're going to not be the slowest or the fastest. So it's, uh, you're actually applying that knowledge. It's very good for the kids to understand applying group roles, who does what, because we've all been in groups. We've all been in groups where someone takes over and doesn't let us do anything. Or we've been in groups where they've taken, you know, they, they, or we needed to take over because people didn't do what they were supposed to, especially for kids. Having defined roles is very helpful to them because then it's, oh, that's what you're supposed to do. This is what I'm supposed to do. And then you can define who's not doing what, what they're supposed to. Also later on, it helps. They start realizing, oh yeah, we're all artists in this group. Well, maybe we want a mathematician or maybe we want a, someone that's kinesthetic. I like to teach three ways, audio, visual, and kinesthetically. You'll hear the kids, I always tell them, you're going to hear me talk or explain the instructions. You're visually going to see the instructions. And it might be detailed, a detailed picture set that goes step by step. 
or it might be, you know, a video, it might be a drawing. And then kinesthetically, you're going to do, you're going to get up and do. And what I find is all three kids, there's kids that learn those ways. So by, if you do it in all three ways, it, it kind of works that way out for them. So they, you don't miss that kid that is just visual or just auditory or just kinesthetic. So the roles in my, that I use, and these labels can change. You'll see, um, I just call them, but the first role is academic assistant. So their job is to fill the paperwork out. I will point out when I first started, it was the paperwork, literally the hand and writing, and they didn't like that so much. Then it switched to the Google forms or filling out forms and filling in it digitally, which they didn't mind it as much. I've added video. They're the ones responsible for videoing because one of the things about our programs that's hard is you can show the end result a lot of times, but how do you show the process? So the video apps and stuff I'm going to show you and talk to you about gives you that ability for the kids to show, oh, here's, I built this, this is step one, and I built this in step two. I mean, it's actually funny. It's made my academic assistant go from being the job nobody wanted to, they all want to do that job. So it's just a kind of an interesting thing that has happened with that. But I'm, and I'm going to talk about how we do this. So that's one role. The other role is master builder. They're the ones that actually put the thing together or do the activity. This is building a car or building our boat. And again, it doesn't have to be, it can be building the paper airplane, can be building any project whatsoever, but they're the ones that actually put it together. And then there is inventory control and their job is to go to the cart and get all the parts for the person. I think I'm actually going to switch and have the inventory control fill out the Google form now. Because what happens in all the roles, it's feast or famine. It's, oh, I have a lot to do with academic assistant. And then I'm sitting and waiting to video what they do. Master builder stands and waits. Then they get the parts they have to build. They have to tear down. And then inventory control has a lot at the beginning and at the end. By defining these roles, they kind of all have a little to do at different times. Each one has a responsibility. The other thing I do with these roles is they, they constantly rotate. So that's another kid. If kids think I'm always going to be master builder, I'm always going to be academic assistant, they kind of get a little upset. But if you say, oh, today you're academic assistant, tomorrow you'll be master builder. Next class, you'll be inventory control. And it always rotates. And I also rotate groups. And I say, the only way you stick in a group is if you fight. If you don't fight, then I'll let you rotate. And my goal is in this level with this group is to have them all rotate between groups. Last thing is I did have, I did find that there is a role for an observer. So I used to have these cameras and this is what I first started off started with these cheap cameras and the kids would run around and take pictures. And I found that having a kid step back and look at what the project is and figure out being just watching it is a valuable thing. So what I found was like, if you end up with groups of three and you apps and you can't make all three, so you, if I end up with groups of two, I share the, we have an academic assistant, we have a master builder, we share the inventory control role. But also what happened is every once in a while, I'd end up with a full group. And because I have, you know, each table has groups of three, I have seven carts. And sometimes, you know, they, at the beginning of the year, I'd have classes like with an extra kid or two. So I would just hand them uh, a camera. So in this case, we have just a, an eye touch, an eye touch that I would hand them. This is just an eye touch in a fancy, looks like a camera case. I really like the iTouch because you can lock it to guided access so they can't do anything but the camera. Turn the camera and I send the kid around the classroom taking pictures of projects. Like that's where a lot of these pictures you're seeing has come from so that uh, they become an observer of what's going on. Now, the tools I will point out, I'm going to talk about some tools, but I do do want to point out I am platform agnostic. I'm, I'm going to have some that are Google, some that are more PC, some that are Apple, some that are web-based so it doesn't matter which one you use. I'm not advocating like one over another. I'm just advocating, I just, what I use, but I'm going to say, oh, video. And I'm going to say, this is something I use. And I'll, as I do these PDs, I'll try to jump between platforms and jump between my operating systems, whether it's Chrome, whether it's a PC, Microsoft, or whether it's Apple, just to so show it's not about that. It's about the tool. I'm not advocating for any specific tool. I just, whatever, a boot for work, a slipper for play is what I like to say. If it, what's the best tool? Sometimes you need the boot. Sometimes you need the slipper. Sometimes the Apple pro product you need. Some of that I touch works great. And I use that. That's my Apple product, but I use Chrome for my management and I use uh, the, I'm on the PC now with my Zoom. So uh, just realize it's not specific to it. Now, when we get done, if you are like, oh, what would be an equivalent? I, we're all a Mac school. We're all a PC school. We're all, I can try to find that stuff for you. I'm going to try to show a lot of stuff I did. It said is, is web-based. It's cross-platform. But I did want to point that out. I'm not advocating any specific. It's more about you need to figure out what tool fits your best. There's tons of free stuff or built-in stuff too. 
because uh, you know Google Classroom has Meets in it, Zoom is available. You know they have a tons of stuff that's already built in for you. So let's. I'm going to now talk about the practical applications. So I've been kind of talking about the overview of STEM. I kind of talked about okay, now like teamwork, you got to collaborate. You're breaking your groups into your kids into groups. How do you manage this when you get into a STEAM classroom? What the happens to you is. When you have a traditional classroom, you're having that workflow, you're having that traditional class. When you get into that STEM, you kind of have some organized chaos. <laughs> you also have a lot of, I don't know, you figure it out. That's that's part of it. It's letting them play, letting them figure it out. It took, it takes a, it a jump. I came from language arts and social studies and librarian. And I remember distinctly, I, one of my kids were making a skateboard and I'm looking over and I'm watching them and they're gonna drill the hole, the hole wrong in the board. And I, I went to go correct them and I went, wait a minute, they're going to learn more by doing it wrong than me correcting them. So it's a, 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 a you have to figure a way to step back and let them try it. Now, every grade's a little different. The younger grades, I give a lot more detail instruction. I follow them a little bit closer. And as we get older and older and older, I kind of let the reins go back. Also, I have them fifth, sixth, I have them multiple times. So by that time I've built up, uh, they know my, my method methodology. They know how I do my stuff. They also, I know who I have to follow a little more than, than others. And we all have that kids that we have to watch a little bit tighter than the others. I also, the kids know, as I always tell them, if you can't play with the plastic, <laughs> and the pool when we do raise boats i don't know if i can trust you with the power and that one so it, you know you've got to show me you're 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 an audition to show me that you can get to the next level so you need to come up with a way of managing all of this stuff the other thing that happens is your time becomes kind of consolidated so you need a place to manage this and then a place to kind of collect it i try to make it as automated as possible and you do need to add a way of getting not just the product but the process to you as well. And there's tons of ways of doing it, but so we're going to go to classroom. So I use the classroom for my workflow for my management. Okay. And basically this is where uh, my clearinghouse of information is. So the kids, they'll go in, they log in. That's where they gain their access to their Google forms. The manuals are virtual. I also have the manual physical, the younger grades end up getting a little bit more physical stuff than more digital. And as they get older, they get more digital, less physical. So if you click this link, and if you guys want to join this class, that if you don't have experience with Google Classroom, this is uh, I, I'm gonna you can get into this. And again, I'm using Classroom, but there is Apple has a version. Uh, there's Teams. There's other things you can use as well. I'm just gonna use this for now. Show it to you. I like I use this Classroom, so I made a Classroom. If you guys wanted to, you could join this so if you click this class code you can either put the kids directly in or give them the class code and if you guys wanted to join this right now you could the pz2lusz will get you into my google classroom and that gives you access to this classroom the one i'm talking about now so i'm going to show the screen capture then i'm going to jump into the classroom and i can show it to you but this is where i post my assignments this is where my kids they they get their assignments they i collect their work this is where I put grades in. Now, I also, we all have, uh, some of us have power schools. Some of I, we have infinite campus. We have places that the overarching grades, uh, the data storage of everything. I end up using this and link to my grades. So I do my grades here and then I ship them up to my infinite campus. But you, it's same thing with power school, stuff like that you could use. Now, once you get into a classroom, you you can have your typical classwork. You can schedule when you want it to be. I really like it. The other thing too, it happens is if you use this stuff, it starts aggregately building for yourself. So I don't have to reinvent the wheel every year. I can start, I can re-import what I did last year and start with that scaffolding. And I just update the stuff to the kids that are in my class. And what happens I find is every year I just fix Either first, it's just getting them created. Then it's like, oh, I want to make this better. And over time it's built, or I want videos of me teaching, like I'll screen this, I'll screen capture stuff. And then I'll have that as a video. You'll see that in the next session, PD, I'll talk more about, especially when I get to the, when I do skateboards, how I really use my video for training because of time. I don't have, with only, I end up having kids for 20 classes. So I don't have a lot of reteaching time. Also, I want to be able to have transcripts for uh, special ed kids or kids that uh, lower readers that need more time or visually need me. So I do that sort of stuff. So the classwork, you can do different assignments in it. 
And I'm not going to go as specific on this yet, but I, I will add every time I'll say, oh, this is how I did a quiz. I'll do that later on in a PD. But you can create um, you can create a quiz assignments, questions, materials. You can reuse a post from another class. So what's kind of cool, because I end up doing things three times, once I've made it for one class, I can reuse that to the other class. So again, I'm not having to reinvent the wheel. So this is a great clearinghouse for you. I will also point, it has a built-in video feature. So if you want to record yourself or let the kids record themselves, you can actually have breakout rooms in with the Google Meets, just as like Zoom has breakout rooms. So you could turn this on, record, and then have the three kids in their own breakout working together. You jump in and out of. If you don't want to use, I'm going to show Flip in a second. This is another tool I use, but you could use Meets. Or again, Zoom has some of the same features if you if you want. And again, this is all like, this is, I just, you need something to, to manage all your stuff. So this is the actual class. This is the class live, not just still shots of it. So I can go in and see, oh, Sarah joined my class. The cool thing in this is I can add guardians to it so that a parent gets emailed a report. I can have co-teachers in it so they can edit and add stuff to it. I can announce something to the whole class. I can go create and say, you know, I'm going to make an assignment, give it uh, due dates, uh, rubrics, topics. Um, the, I like this because I can actually schedule ahead of time. So I can say, oh, it's not, I'm not assigning it today. I'm scheduling it a month from now or two days from now. Or so it pops up on there. Quiz assignments are cool. And this will make a Google form for you. And I'm going to show that a little bit more with this too over time. But it makes, and then it, the cool thing about the quizzes is it, automatically collects the information and you can set up to automatically correct. So what I find is it takes the minutia, the small stuff, and it will get rid of it for me. And again, that's all of this sort of stuff. I'll come back to this a little bit later. Let me just get back in the slideshow. So again, and I have put this in the link and I'll give you access to it if you just want to join one to be in one as a student to see kind of what it is. Sometimes my ed techs, they'll join as students so they can see what people are missing. So that's my management and I'll get more specific with it. So in a, I also, so here's a Google form. So I collect my information using my, my forms. And so in there, and I've, again, I've given you a way and you could go in and you can, I will, I'll add this link to the chat. And in this, you can go in and you can you can answer some questions about for me. And in that, it's kind of cool because you can have multiple choice questions, essay questions, things of that nature. The good thing is I can make this so that it it goes and collects everything. And what's what's really cool about it is it will collect everything, and then you can go and uh, it can have it automatically uh, collect your information for you and all of that. And that's it's really very kind of helpful that way. Because what happens is it takes away the stuff that I like, to, not the minutia, but the small stuff that then you can focus. It's like what I like to do is like if a language arts you want to focus on answering the essays and not the spell check, the spelling quiz, it kind of gives you that capability. So you get that part again, and as a teacher, it lets you focus more just on there. And I've made it so that it it's talking about my program. So if you look at it, you can say, oh, uh, what school district you are, what subject you teach, what would you, what's the, how do you like the pace of thing, any other feedback, things of that nature. And then when you hit submit, this is what it looks like to me. I can go in and edit so I can make different types of question, multiple choice, checkbox, Dropbox, file, upload. I use it for my... 3D printing, this is how they give me their 3D files. Tons of stuff like this. You can, your responses, you can tell them where to go. So you pick your sheets. What's kind of cool is I end up having a sheet that has, oh, all my quizzes for like my fifth grade have assignments, one, two, three, four, one on the car, one on the boat, and it all comes to me that way. So it's kind of useful that way. The last thing is video. I use Flip, it was called Flipgrid, now it's called Flip. And again, you can use other things, but I just happen to use Flipgrid to collect all my video. So basically what you do is you go in and you set up an account and you log in and in there you can make groups. So I can make, I make each class has, is their own group. I can share it with them and give them my, um, and you just pick your age and your group, what you have you name it, and I can share 
this and give them this copy code and they come to it and only they can come to it. And once you have that code, and I put that in classroom, there's a flip for this group if you would like to go in. And then you can say introductions or like I do, hey, do assignment one, tell me when you're building the car. It's assignment two, tell me about testing the gear ratios. Assignment three, tell me about the traction. And then when we actually do the competitions and what the kids do is these are really cool because when they click on them, it, you as a teacher, you can go in and say how long so I can say one minute, two minute, four minute, 10 minute. I usually never do more than a minute 30, a two minute one. And when the kids start recording, it will start and it will stop and it will start and it will stop. And they live in this TikTok, Snapchat, you know, Reels, Shorts world, YouTube world. So they're all over this. I would recommend in settings, a little trick I've learned, I moderate everything. So what happens, it comes to me, I look at it and then I'll post it. That way nothing gets out there without me having checked it first. And then their classmates can comment on after that. I will point out, you'll have some kids there. Oh, I don't want my video on. I don't want pictures of me on. So what happens is you can hit record. It starts recording. You have to allow your camera. Once you hit that button and you start recording, it will take away that minute 30 or two minutes, whatever time you set. And it will just keep stop, stopping and starting. Now over here, up in these three little things, you can say, you can have a teleprompter for yourself. You can record the screen. I'll do this next time, how I use it to record, like showing coding. How do you show the actual web search that you kids do? I use it for this. So, oh, show me the coding you do, not just tell me what you did. Or here's the robot working, but I don't know if you did it or not. I have the kids, they'll use the my web cameras. All my fifth graders, this has been a new addition. Since COVID, we had all these webcams, and it's really cool to give the kids, plug it in the cam, it goes from their laptop looking down and it gives them another aspect of, and they're recording what's happening in the group. And I am all color coded. So the kids know, oh, that's mine. Now what's really cool is over in the left-hand side on, on this here, you'll see you can hit letters. They can add, add titles to their, their overlays. They, this is a neat little feature. If you have some kid that doesn't want their picture on, they can go and hit the emoji thing and then take one of these emojis and put it over their face where their face would be. When I did social studies two years ago, I had them pretend they were reporters and do a whole thing like, oh, but you're back in history at this time. What if they had a cell phone during the Revolutionary War or during, dur during different things in the history and stand like you're pretending to be that? You can have checkpoint, uh, little boards on the side if you want. You can blur the background so they don't have to see anything. There's tons of options for you in this. You can add a picture too if you want right so the kids are talking about a picture that's right to their side and the cool thing is you start it you stop it you start it you stop it and it will do running time as you do once you get to a point i have all the kids and i'm going to show you a video i have all the kids introduce themselves like what role they are and it does give them that experience of being in front of camera but in a safe way because i'm the only one that sees it unless i release it and i talk to the kid about releasing it once you hit record and you hit the, the the next button and you're done, you can split it up. They're not really going to be able to edit it, but they can like cut it up pieces and, and really, and what will happen is kids will think this, it's actually a cool thing to happen because they will go and record and not have enough time and go, oh, Mr. Kelly, but I said, well, go back and split that bad section that you had or that mess up. So it's kind of a cool little thing and you can just split it and then you can just delete any clips that you didn't want to. And then once you hit confirm, they go and say, hey, this is for project two, Mr. Kelly, and they post it and it comes to me. And then it uploads. The cool thing as a teacher, it's the organization is really good. So if I had people introduce themselves, I have this topic, which I can copy to my all my other groups as I want. So here it goes. I did this this summer course. I did this and they all did this. Well, you can see as a teacher, it comes to me like this. I can go in and I click on one of them that I want to watch. I click and watch it. And then I'll go and I can comment on it. I can release it so other kids can comment it. But again, it's a great way. I And it's short. I don't let them do long ones, but it lets me really watch video of what they do. So here's a sample. Now, I've all my kids' pictures in this, by the way, are all blurred and the voices I've altered, just so you guys know. So there's nobody... And I'm the orange team's inventory control. And I'm the orange team's master builder. Hi, I'm and I'm the orange team's academic assistant. This is our robot, Aubrey. Hi, Aubrey.
What do you think about Aubrey's breakdown? Um, I think it was a really big setback, but our team can power through it. <laughs> uh, Aubrey. Aubrey says hi. She's back in business. Our fearless master builder is driving Aubrey and she's nursed her back to health. <laughs> Now, I will point out what happens with this is it you will get a, a connection to kids that are dead quiet, that don't talk in front of anybody, but will talk in front of this to you. You notice they threw in filters. They will go filter crazy and all the you know things. You got to, I let them get it, that out of their system. But this was a way I could see, oh, I have them tell me what their role is and tell me what they're doing. So here's another video. Have you videoed it? Yeah, we videoed it. Okay, so you're videoing She's it. Showing it working. So in that, the kid, the our academic assistant had to video show work what they did. They pause and start it. The other kids had to do it. So we introduced their roles. They link it to Flipgrid. They capture the building. It's short clips. They add filters, emoji, and edit and trim, and fill it and give it to me in their form. Have you videoed it? Yeah, we videoed it. The master builder, they're exposed to build things. They test the build. They answer the question. They dismantle the build. See, it becomes independent. I'm walking around the room. This is this is a kid with one of the cameras. Uh, the room I touch. I walk around the room and, and I stay out of the out of it. This is all them figuring out. They're showing again the video of what they're doing. The inventory control person collects all the parts, provides all the parts, narrates the video. We have to start from scratch since the last people um, dismembered our vehicle. We're already finished with the small frame of the body. We've got the wheels on for the minor body frames. You can see him demoing it. He's the engineer control, so he's going to get the parts. He's going to get the parts. She gonna make it? Is it gonna work? He's working. All right, roll it. And that's kind of there. I will point out an added bonus of doing this is I have seven eyes in the classroom because I tell the kids you might not be in your group video, but the class, the team beside you is videoing. So as I watch it, it's great if I have a kid fighting or they're being inappropriate, I bring the mom and dad and we can say, hey, let's watch what your child was doing. And it's not, oh, Mr. Kelly's saying this. It's, and they kind of go, so they actually, it helps you. The class becomes better behaved because there's cameras all over. And you can see they can have this hard work. They can overlay text. They kind of, they really enjoy this visual aspect of it. And that's okay if you, you know, so some of this is not new. Some of, and you might use a different video tool. You might use a different management. I'm not saying I'm just trying to, you need something, some sort of management, some sort of video ab ability. And I'll keep all my PDs. I'll keep adding a new tool like WeVideo or different tools. I try to stay agnostic and I try to say web-based if I can. So now that you've got this roles, now we do, you want to challenge. This is learning from success. You want to challenge to apply your knowledge. So the kids, they, they, they built a car, they did testing. And now I say, okay, you tested and you learned about uh, pulling forces and friction and traction. Who can make a car pull the most weight? Who can make the fastest car? Who can make the slowest car? Who can make the sailboat uh, sail the, the best? So we do competitions. And what they do is they compete as a group. So there's groups of three and for I, they win a prize. I give out simple 3D printed little fidget cubes. So they don't cost, I just, at the end of the year, I take all the leftover filament and just make a whole bunch of them. So I don't waste my filament. And I give them out and you, you think I give them gold just by giving those. And they, they, you know, if you win the first round, because what happens is some kids win multiple and it's really cool. At the end, we look at the thing and like who won in a lot of groups and we say, well, why? Well, they were, they worked well with their classmates also, you know, and then, so they start to look outside of just that themselves. They look, Set, go. So this is racing fastest. Stop. 294 on the end, Anna's class right there. 294. Wow, if they were, you're going to win again. <laughs> okay, reset. I'll do one more. 
literally and you'll hear the kids get excited too as well right now we have to learn about being good sports because sometimes they lose and i and i have some you'll they earn some prizes at the end for being good sports and learning that again this is a younger age my high i have higher expectation of my older kids there are tons of different challenges i do a sail a paddle in a propeller boat where they build the sail paddle. Now you're looking at, oh, I have this stuff. I will point out, you can do this with straws. You don't need any of the kits that I have to do some of these activities with them. Go! Let's go! Let's go! We beat it! 387! I've never had a kid in my, you know, other than going, woohoo, Mr. Kelly, I, you know, they really enjoy this. I have to say, you can see I changed COVID, took away from us blowing on it to fanning it, but. And demolition derby and ready more open set go go and drive i start in the no, the limited yes. they can do to get to the point where they can get yes. no no you yes. no, 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 okay stop and so we manufacture we do some testing we we apply it by racing are doing our challenges and we are using our knowledge. So we manufacture by, by applying our knowledge through our effort. And then we'll reiterate. Uh, what you'll see is tons of kids come back to me after the fact, say, oh, I wish I could rebuild this to do it. So I build in chances to take it all apart. And we're learning about making mistakes. Making mistakes teaches us. And that's kind of, they come back and go, oh, I wish I could do, I could do this or that uh, a little bit better. And basically that's makers. So that's my kind of overall arching concept that I'm, I'm doing. I will point out, it looks like, oh, I have this kit. And man, if I had that kit, you can do it with Legos, paper planes, straws. You don't have to have my thing. This will fit in your math. Uh, this is my kids using the brick cube to do very similar things. So they're, you see, they're doing math. They're doing science on your angles. That's using the Lego bricks. This is uh, the Lego brick Q set. And again, this is the uh, whole thing around science and uh, momentum and uh, the pendulum swing. This is wind and set. Fan. And this is a challenge. So they built the car oh, and like go. you can have their car go the farthest. Ooh, look at her this go. Is our first, and then they combine and rebuild. And again, you see. Now the last group got it, got their car to go all the way to the green. You can make it. You're not slowing down yet. Come on. Um, come on. You can never tell who's going to win. Yeah, now you guys are father now. Yeah, now you guys are father now. Again, I did this with paper airplanes. It cost me the paper to do this. So I just, I don't want to come across that it has to have all these fancy things. This is, it can be simple. We've done it with erector sets too, breaking it into the pieces and whatnot. By the way, and I really wanted to tell about this, Harbor Freight has a $200 gift thing. So if you, you know, I'll have this link, but if you look, they'll give you $200 and you can go buy tools there. So a way to get it. The state is doing a, an MLTI launches the teaching learning technology grant you should go apply for it. I'll give this link to as well. It's right. If you Google MLTI launches teaching learning technology grant, it, it will go to the main DOE and that has, uh, so you can apply. So some of you guys have been talking to me, oh, I'm missing, I didn't get the Legos, right? This is a great way to uh, buy that stuff. Or maybe it's a 3D printer or maybe it's some, uh, a power tool that you don't have. Uh, this is something you guys, it, it, that, that's happening now. So it's, it's a great way to get, money it's going to be tried to be spread throughout the entire all the different schools so it's going to be who who applies is going to be getting it please feel free to go to that that's a great one the harbor freight is a 200 dollars one i loved it there's i've gotten um battery powered glue guns stuff like that regular drills and things like that but there's tons of stuff like that that is just awesome to use oh here we go can i jump in uh with the harbor yeah. freight um i I applied at six o'clock in the morning and by two o'clock I was approved. And then within, yeah. Yeah. within, a, within two days, they sent me the gift card, um, online yeah. and I'm going to go to Augusta to pick up the sandpaper thing you were talking about. 
Yeah. And I try to, I usually, I apply for it once a year, just so I don't, you know, and what we, we didn't know if it was like our district, but it's by school. So you, you could do it, your elementary, a mid high school. And again, the cool thing is there, they have so much different stuff that you can always find something that fits, uh, fits what you're doing. And the other, the other grant I posted in the chat is there is quite a bit, that it's going to be some money for this. So you're going to be able to do like, maybe it's, it, you could get thousand, three, four, five thousand dollars worth of stuff, you know. So, I'm always writing grants. Uh, oh, I'll post. I don't have it. Ag in the classroom has grants too, about two thousand dollar grants. They're a little bit more based agricultural, but we've gotten greenhouses. I've got my kiln shed, my wood mill from it. A lot of times too, is if you do it, you can get matching funds. Also, what I find with STEM, it's easier if you go to like we have Vic Firth and we have NEC Welding and we have business around us but if i go to them and i'm asking something that kind of matches what their what there is it makes more sense prentice carlisle was like oh we'll but they, we'll give you some money because you're wood you're getting a wood mill that type of thing so this overview we kind of did you know tech science technology engineering art and math so each one they're not separate they're kind of together you might focus on one of them and then you kind of bring the others in so if you notice what I talked about in I with this, I'm doing science. I'm doing pulling forces. I'm doing grams. I'm doing friction, uh, doing that sort of stuff. So the kids are learning that and they testing it and learn. They learn how to ring a spring balance versus weight versus pulling forces, Newton versus grams. Technology, we're using cameras. We're using our laptops. We're using, later on, I'll talk about asynchronous uh, communication. We use 3D printers later on and we do virtual worlds and connecting through 3D projects, stuff like that. And I'll be doing that in a later PD. And we do engineering. They're designing for their challenges. They're say, oh, like it's interesting to watch. You know, design, you think designing the fastest car, okay, slowest car is the hardest design because you need your car to still move, but be slow, but not so slow it doesn't move. Demolition Derby, you get it to stay together, but you still, so we're adding, I, it's not just engineering for Mr. Kelly's thing. It's, oh, now let's take it and merge that to make a, have something like we have to play around with the design. The funny thing is when I'm all done and I ask after the fact how to uh, do something, they will remember this. I have eighth graders, I have freshmen, sophomore. If I ask them some of these concepts, they'll still remember them. Where if I did it a traditional way, they wouldn't remember it all. If I did a, here's a test, they won't remember it. Oh, by the way, I'm jumping back to English, even though it's not in the steam, you know, is I am having kids read and write, but they're reading technical manuals. It's interesting to go through. It's, it's, it's a great thing to do with the kids because what happens is even your high level readers will have difficulty with this and your, your low level will, so it brings everybody even because you're reading technical terms they never read. When you look at manuals, it's done in a totally different way than they're used to, but having reading and writing as part of what you're doing. Art, the design. Now we do have some colors and uh, spatial reasoning and shape and coloring and doing that, but also like the design of, of the actual project is art in itself. And tons of math. So uh, they learn how to read spring balance. So they uh, stop watches. We do times. We're doing weights and springs. And again, you can just integrate it all within your what you're doing. So my overarching thing was collaboration. Students, they, they transfer these skills. You And I call it inventory tool, but you have project leaders that get the group going. You have master builders. You have observers, academic assistants. And by the way, those roles will just translate all the way. When I talk in sixth grade, when I talk in seventh, when I talk in eighth, it doesn't, it doesn't change. What happens in my older grade, some of it is we still have group, but not group work together. So, so my future trainings are going to be Next thing will be learning from challenges. It's all going to be around my Legos, my robotics and asynchronous grouping. And I'll talk about some other tools, like how do you screen capture stuff? So it's not just a video. How do you screen capture the digital work? And then we'll go to learn from failure. And that's kind of producing skateboards, but it, that's going to be talking about how you do production and how you make uh, the kids able to do the work without being in your class for every little thing. And what's the steps and what do you, uh, a real world project Something that starts to have tolerance is something that if you drill it wrong, it has an extra hole. If you don't line it up, the, the board goes in the wrong direction. In other words, a real consequence. 
Uh, and the last one, you're learning from necessity. So finding a project and we have to make something and it actually has to work. It has to have tolerances, it has to match. It's not just, we're not doing it just for the fun of Mr. Kelly's class. We're doing it, there's a, there's a customer, there's something. And I'll add more later on. So I thank you for coming for the ride. I'm gonna keep adding and I'll, in, in that Google form, if you wanna fill it out that I gave you, it would be very helpful. That's a good feedback for me if you found this was too fast, low, or if you say, hey, I really wish you'd talk about this. And also, if you give me your contact, I'll keep make sure I, I, I email you when I, before I'm going to do it. I will be doing one May in three or four, you know, three or four weeks. Mine, I, mine got messed up last time. The Zoom never opened. It was supposed to be last Thursday. But now I have control of it, so that shouldn't be too bad. I will kind of, my webpage, Steam Makers uh, at education.education, .education, will have all the information in it. This is the professional development. So if you click on that link, this is what we just did today, kind of breaking it down. And I will add to this page, this video and the slideshow that I just had. So I will be adding it. I just, I'd like a chance to edit it and kind of make it easier for you. The curriculum I will add. So there's a doc. So here's this curriculum. This is kind of what we just talked about learning from success. And then I will keep adding more as we go through. This is, I do, I'll do a newsletter. So this was the newsletter I did for this cycle. I'll be doing another one and I'll have a newsletter that kind of says, oh, this is the focus of what we're doing. Kind of this one right now was kind of the newsletter saying, oh, here's the highlights of what's coming up. And then this is about me. If you want more information about me, it's talking about what I, you know, my philosophy of teaching and where I've come from and you, how to contact me. You can get me through email. You can email me direct. All right. Does anybody have any questions or anything that they would like to ask? Thank you guys so much for coming. I hope this was useful to you. My hope is, and again, I will help if you contact and give me information. Say, I really wish you would teach this. I am going to teach other stuff. I'm going to teach, you know, keep working my way through and it will go beyond this. I'm going to get to the point where I'm talking about, you know, higher level and how to add more stuff to it. I will try to do some more focus on a subject if you need me to do it too as well though but i thank you so much for coming and i'm sorry about the glitch last time but i will post this and i'll tell you when i have this all posted so any questions and again if you have any specific questions i'm here to try to help you that's what i my hope is to build a, a reservoir of because people come up and ask me about this all the time and i will point out it's it's not just for my class it's it this i'm hoping these tools you have you'll be able to get through everything so I'm good. I've got you past four o'clock. I didn't want to go too far past. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. And again, I will send you links and I will be putting this video and the slideshow you saw in the, in the curriculum on my website so that you can have access to it. Thank you very much.